Father, we thank you for tonight. Thank you for all our prayer. We love to pray. We love to seek your face. And Father, even as we prepare ourselves to be used by you in whatever capacity in this end time move, let your perfect will always be done in our life and on earth as it is in heaven. Glorify thy son Jesus in our midst and through our lives and we covenant to always give all the glory, worship and honor in Jesus' name. And everyone say, Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Praise God, if you have your Bibles, um, we're going to look at um, John chapter 14. John chapter 14. Tonight, I just want to explore the Greek word paneros, which is translated manifest. Translated manifest. And expand a little bit of understanding on how Jesus manifests himself to us. Because he definitely is going to do it, but we need to understand uh, all the various aspects of his manifestation. So I'll read from John chapter 14, verse 19. Oh, we got that up to. You can see that, right? It's very clear, even though it's smaller than Singapore. Yeah. Says in verse 19, A little while longer, and the world will see me no more. But you will see me. Uh, there's another verse that I told you they could claim because Jesus says you will see him and uh, because I live you will live also at that day you will know that I'm in my father and you in me and I in you he who has my commandments and keeps them it is he who loves me and he who loves me will be loved by my father I will love him and manifest myself to him and that's a Greek word manifest I punch it so you can see that. You can see uh, the Greek word uh, empanizo. Empanizo uh, is a word form of the word manifest. After what you see the noun form, which is like empanes kind of thing, uh, there are various noun forms. Empanizo is from the word panizo uh, or paniro, which talks about to appear. And uh, the M is just a prefix that talks about um, appearing. Uh, M is different from N. M is like appearing uh, to you uh, in a very um, personal way, like M. So M, M, uh, Embry, Embry, me, oh my, this next word. Uh, this N is in. M is like uh, close to you, appearing. Uh, within your side. But the main word is the word panizo and we have always taken the word uh, panizo or manifest to apply to that manifestation. And here uh, Judas, uh, Jude asked him and said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us but not to the world? In other words, how Jesus will demonstrate himself, we need to take a note even at that point that that when Jesus manifests himself, he doesn't necessarily want the world to know. Sometimes he picks and chooses situation in such a manner that he will appeal only to those who are close to him, those who love him, and those of his disciples, but in a way that the world doesn't know. Sometimes the world sees some side effect, but otherwise it is Jesus' purpose that he doesn't want the world to know at all about that. So, bear that in mind when uh, we talk about Jesus' manifestation. And it says in verse 23, Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. My Father will love him. We will come to him, make our home with him. Uh, he who does not love me does not keep my words. The word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. Now, as far as we're concerned, this is the main words that we talk about manifestation. When we talk about manifestation, I guess from the teaching and your understanding right now, you're probably thinking of Jesus appearing to you in your heart, in a vision, and in various ways, correct? When I say Jesus manifests, He will reveal to you in some way. 
I want to expand that tonight so that when you having a prayer time and all that prayer, you will open yourself to realize that there are various degrees of manifestation that he can come for. Just from the word, here is the word M, uh, Fanizo. But just Fanizo by itself uh, has an appearance where it can mean light and all that. But let's uh, give you some words there. Uh, the reason why I'm teaching on this is also because of uh, Romans chapter 8. If you have your Bible, turn to Romans chapter 8. The manifestation of the sons of God. In Romans chapter 8, it says in verse 19, <coughs> For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. In the Old King James, it translates the word revealing as manifestation. Now, of the sons of God. Let's punch that and see. It is the word apocalypsis. Apocalypsis. Now, this is a slightly different meaning. Totally different Greek word. And here is talking about the revelation. Now, the Greek word uh, kalipsis talk about a light coming. Some sort of revealing of the light. So he say that uh, in Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1, Arise and shine, for the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. So people will begin to see some sort of manifestation of the light of God. We talk about how, you know, I, I, I'm eagerly waiting, looking forward to the day when we first break through to over the elements of the earth. When we break through to, to be surpassing the natural laws of physics. Uh, that's something to look forward to. And the first time it occurred, I really sort of have a glimpse of it. It is like... Uh, the glory and the light of God is in our DNA such that uh, there is another layer of light that surpasses these uh, natural lower laws uh, that are there. Although this light could be visible to those who are spiritually discerning, this light might not be visible to all. One thing is, Jesus, when he was on the earth in his 33 years, he was without sin, correct? So, we all know that his body was different from ours. No sin, no sin nature. And his, his flesh, his bones, his tissues are different. Do you know that there's a light that comes from him? But not visible to people. That's why the natural people think he's an ordinary person. But there's another layer of light coming from him. Because his body was sinless. Remember, he is he's like the uh, second man, the last Adam. So there is a shininess about him. And um, uh, let me try to find someone who has that. Uh, describe it. Marita Davis. In the book, Sins Beyond the Grave. And there is an old English version and a new English version. She lived about a time, uh, a few hundred years ago. And she looked at the book since beyond the grave. Basically, in that book, she was taken to children's paradise. She spent most of the time in children's paradise. Although she did visit a few other places. Now, in the book, in children's paradise, she described how the children were given a glimpse of Jesus' life on earth. Because they were all, they all died as children, so they had to learn about the life of Jesus still. And so it was like a holographic projection, uh, not something like a movie theater, but it's real in the sense that it's a real uh, record of what happened to Jesus. And so they saw the part about Jesus before his crucifixion and Jesus teaching and walking about. Because the view that they see from heaven is with the added spiritual dimension, not just seeing him from the earth. So there's a spiritual dimension. That means if there are angels there, you see an angel there. Uh, if there's a light flowing from Jesus, see the light. The thing about it is, Jesus always had a light shining through him. So when the children saw it, they could see. It's obvious it was different from everybody else. Everybody else, uh, surface area and skin was like a normal thing. But Jesus was bright and brilliant. 
But early people cannot see the light. Early people cannot see the light. Right now, if your spiritual eyes are open, you can see the degree of brightness in each one of us. Some might be more bright than others. But in the natural, everybody looks the same. Because you only see the surface area of the flesh. But there are degrees of brightness in the spiritual dimension. And look at Jesus and the fighters are all because he was without sin nature in his time. So bear that in mind that when the Bible uses the word apocalypse, it has a sense of a meaning that there is a light that is coming from the manifest sons of God. And the thing about it is all nature will recognize it. The only thing, people that will recognize it is humans. Even a, uh, angels will see it. Even demons, because they are spirit beings, will see it. Only humans who are spiritually blind might not know anything. And might think that you are the same, even though you actually have changed and evolved into a manifest sons of God. Bear that in mind. But uh, because of the difference in the two Greek words, I like to link the two in a Another particular word, I explore the usage first of the word manifest in general in the New Testament before we come up with some understanding. So, if you don't mind, we're going to look at some scriptures. And uh, since uh, this is all that prayer, we got time to teach. And let's look at the first one in uh, Romans chapter 1, verse 19. Here, the word manifest is just the word paneros. Now, funny Ross is um, like um, uh, sort of a, like an adverb. So it's, but the root is still the same. It's not like a verb, which is funny zone. And uh, when you get the word, Jesus said, I will manifest to you. I will am funny zone to you in a word form. But here is like uh, uh, an adverb situation. It describes the situation that what can be known of God, it says in verse 19, because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. And here is just the word phanizo, not the word emphanizo, uh, but the word phaniros, which I told you is the same Greek word. Uh, now, it, the Greek word sometimes change the prefix or change the, the suffix uh, just to make it an adverb, an adjective, and a noun, and all these things. But the root is the same. It's talking about the manifestation unto us. But why I want to look at this word is this. It refers to those who are generally on earth, who are not born again. That even before we were born again, we all had the ability to recognize God. He says, what can be known of God is manifest inside every human being. So that every human being, even if you never were preached the gospel and never had a chance to hear the gospel, you cannot say you had no chance to know God. Everyone has a chance to God in your own way. A little light. Because the gospel is the clearest. The gospel just reveals what God has done in revealing Christ. But without the gospel, every man that comes to this earth has been lighted with the light of Jesus in some way. He says he is the light that shines to every man that comes into the earth. John chapter 1. And here Romans 1 confirms that inside every human being is an ability to recognize God. And why I like this word, he uses the word funny wrong. Which means, for many of us who want to know the manifestation of Jesus, which is a higher degree, 
you begin to see now that the word manifest and manifestation got different degree. This is the lowest degree that even the unbelievers have. An ability to recognize God inside them. And I mentioned that because the Bible says they are without excuse. What may be known of God is already manifest inside them. Somewhere inside you is what I call a resonance of God. So that when God shows Himself in any way, a part of you resonates. The part of you that was created in God's image resonates. You might not see something. You might not see any light. You might not hear anything, but something in you know there is God. There is God. And the reason why I touch on this point, I want to go to the Greek words, is to stir these basic things inside each one of us. To know that we got different sensors of manifestation. You got the most basic of which you can sense God. This is not even the anointing within, because this one is talking about all men in general. And since we are born again, it's obvious that this one will be activated again. There is some part of you that will resonate when God manifests. And they'll tell you, there is a God. God is watching, God is hearing this awareness of God that is in you so that you will recognize the manifestation of God in different degrees <coughs> this is the most basic degree the general one then I like to point to Romans chapter 10 verse 20, remember I just want to do a general Greek word survey first Here is an interesting verse, and uh, just to punch a Greek word. <coughs> this is a noun, a compound noun. It's a Greek word, and finesse. <coughs> so if Jesus has manifested, he says, I will manifest myself, and panizo. After he has done that, he said, that was an and finesse. That means the manifestation. He described it as that, a noun. <coughs> and appearance. So here you see verse 30. <coughs> Paul quotes Isaiah and says, Isaiah is very bold and says, I was found by those who did not seek me. <coughs> I was made manifest <coughs> to those who did not ask for me. To Israel he says, all day long I stretch out my hands to disobedient and contrary people. Now, <coughs> we talk about the rejection of Christ by the Israelites. <coughs> and I want to <coughs> look into this verse because <coughs> we can learn something from here. Why is it that Paul is saying the Jews, remember as I said, he will preach and hearing they will not hear and seeing they will not see. Instead, Paul says the Gentiles have found Jesus. <coughs> <coughs> Here you can understand one point. If your heart is a heart of unbelief, which the Jews had, even if God manifests, you will not see. That is what we learn from this word. Why did the Jews reject Christ? They already have their theology form. Their theology form, of course they knew that Christ was going to be born in Bethlehem. And they keep thinking Jesus was from Nazareth. 
So their their own lack of investigative facts blinded them. I would call that a, a half truth. Jesus was from Nazareth, but he was born in Bethlehem. A lot of people have been deceived by not just lies, half truth. A half truth presented in such a way that it's a lie. Jesus was not from Nazareth alone. He was from Bethlehem. And then they have their own theology that if the Messiah were to come, which is this part, they don't have Bible, he must come from among them. I remember when the man who was healed was confronted, one of the things they said, have any of the leaders who believe in him? Assuming that if the Messiah come, the leaders must believe. Then, after the leaders believe, then the common people can believe. As if the leaders are the one who sanction who the Messiah is. And because Jesus was a carpenter, and did not come as a rabbi, did not come from the Sanhedrin Council, did not come from any of the, the eat group, the religious group, they rejected him. <coughs> On top of that, the common theology of that time was that the Messiah is just an earthly king to fulfill the promises to David when again they will have a monarchy under God. Which is why the disciples asked, when will Israel be restored? Even the disciples were asking the question, can you see that the reason why seeing they cannot see is because they got too many hang-ups about who the Messiah is. They actually theologize themselves out of belief in the Messiah by their own rational thinking and their own supposed theology and doctrine. But it is the Gentiles and no Jewish hang-ups. The Gentiles see Jesus doing signs and wonders. The Gentiles say, okay, he's not a man. He's more than a man. He must be God. Because no man can do what he does. And the Gentiles accepted Christ like that. So from these words, we learn something about manifestation. One reason why even though Jesus is manifesting in this end time and people are not getting it, is because of a heart of unbelief. All believing in lies, half truths, that are not true but sufficient to block them from seeing the truth. That is another verse about manifestation. And let me tell you so that even if a full manifestation is standing six or one meter away from you, you will still reject. Jesus, you know, stood right in front of them in the Sanhedrin Council. They even slapped Jesus, correct? Beat him. How dare they treat the Messiah that way? He may knew who he was. You know how they dare to treat him that way? Because they don't believe he is the Messiah. Can you imagine the guy who slapped Jesus? Is one day going to stand before Jesus at the judgment seat and now he's looking into the mighty face of the one whom he slapped. He might look at his hand and wish his hand was cut off. This is important. To know why the manifestation doesn't occur. We need to be cleansed from our traditions that blind us. False theology and false doctrine. False assumptions and hard truths that prevent us from seeing the truth. We must be like a little child. Sometimes to see the things of God. This tiny verse here is important. So we are learning things about manifestation. 
Don't worry, I just run through the scriptures and then I reach a conclusion so that we can really pray and recognize when God manifests in our midst. In other words, <clears throat> is Romans 16, verse 26. <clears throat> I read from verse 25, 26. Almost the last few verses of Romans chapter 16. Now to him who is able to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret since the world began. See this manifestation of Christ, Paul says, but now make manifest. And we know he's talking about Christ manifest. Because until Christ came, it was kept secret. Even the angels didn't know what was to happen. If the angels had known, there would have been no rebellion. Which means even the angels in a perfect state did not know what was happening. And so, and, and there are many scriptures that confirm, when Christ came, it was like, wow, the angels want to look into what's happening now. God finally revealing himself. Kept secret since the world began. He says, but now make manifest and by the prophetic scriptures make known to all nations. And just to look at the Greek word manifest is phanero, <coughs> which is again like um, a, uh, an appearance, phanero, making an appearance. Uh, like a noun, appear, manifestly declare, manifest forth. And um, so, Faniro uh, is like another form of verb, different from Fanizo. Fanizo is like a personal appearance, Faniro is like a manifestation, a very general manifestation. Faniro. Uh, like uh, something just make its appearance and without necessarily being personalized. This fanizo is a personalized form. It is a thought out of word also. <coughs> now make manifest. In this word, when we examine the word manifest, we see link with the scriptures. Link with the scriptures. What do we learn from this word? We learn that every manifestation is in line with all the Bible verses that confirm the manifestation. So no manifestations of God will be contradictory to the Bible, against the Bible, but will actually be supported by the Bible. So there will be Bible verses that confirm the appearance. As you know, when Christ came, He fulfilled hundreds of scriptures. And He manifests and He said, He did this so that it is written. He did this so that it is fulfilled. He did that so that it is fulfilled. Many scriptures were fulfilled. Which is what Paul said. We have to look at the scriptures to find that. Don't forget, Paul himself did not recognize Christ. He himself did not examine carefully. A superficial examination was not enough. He needed a thorough examination. And in fact, Paul came to know Christ by a direct encounter. Then only he go back and check the scriptures. And realize, wow, there are all these scriptures that are fulfilled. And part of Luke's gospel is actually Paul's gospel. It's Paul's investigation together with Luke. And uh, because Luke was a very close friend of Paul. Uh, just like Mark is actually Peter's gospel. And Mark was, because Mark, Mark was not one of the twelve. Mark records for Peter. Luke records very much for himself and for Paul. And they will investigate all these occurrences in the scriptures. And Paul was the one who discovered more things about Christ than any of the apostles. That's why he got the most letters. 
in most scriptures. You look at Peter's epistle, First Peter, Second Peter. Again, you check how many uh, scriptures are quoted on Christ. Not many. You look at Paul's Paul's writing. He found scriptures that relate to uh, he's the firstborn of the day. He's this and he's that. So many scriptures that fulfill the coming of Jesus Christ. All these Paul got from his own study. Because in order to find the scriptures, you must know the scriptures. And Paul was a man who knows the scriptures. Which tells us that this verse is important. When, when you have a manifestation and you don't have enough Bible knowledge or scriptures in you, you are at a disadvantage. Your manifestation does not have enough crystallization. You know a manifestation can become more solid if you have more scriptures. So it crystallizes. It's more solid. You know, okay, this fulfills that. That fulfills this. So the more scriptures you have, and by the way, the word anero also means a light. Now let me show for some parts here. <coughs> to appear, manifestly declare, and in here, make manifest or visible or known what has been hidden or unknown to manifest, whether by words or deeds or in any other way. Make actual and visible, to realize, to make known by teaching, to become manifest. So, there you have it. Faniro. Another important thing. So even though Christ is manifesting itself today, there is no excuse to stop reading the Bible. To gain more knowledge or thoroughness of the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation. The more Bible verses you have embedded on your inside, the more times you read the Bible, and the Bible becomes uh, a second nature to you, you know the Bible like the Bible in your hand, the greater your ability to hold on to a manifestation. You can even recognize manifestation that other people cannot recognize. Because they don't have enough scriptures. So, look at all these wonderful verses on the word manifest. And just a few more before I lay down some conclusions. There's one in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 13. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 13. And each of these has a particular point you can learn from about the manifestation of Christ. So here in Ephesians chapter 5, it says here, let me have a point to read from verse 12, verse 12 and 13. For it is shameful to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. Talk about the bad guys. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by light, by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore he says, Awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Here's the word, Faniro. Faniro, to make an appearance. Uh, both of us from the same Greek word. Now this verse tells you an interesting secret. Even though he is trying to warn against the enemy, See, the word manifest can be used for positive and negative. Like for example, the Antichrist is being made manifest. Correct? And over the next 7 times 7 times 7 years, uh, 7 times 7 years, uh, more and more as he matures as a young man, he will become manifest. But to those who know even before he manifests, the light shows who he is. And Paul gives only one thing here. He says, The secret to manifestation is the light. The light of Jesus. The more light, the more manifest. Like, like this new projector here, I'm impressed because with this bright light here, it's still so bright. Normally you need to like darken a bit to see clearly. But because it's so bright, you can see even almost like in daylight. I'm sure if the sun was up, we still probably would see it like 
Look how near that light is to that. And you remember the other old projector? <laughs> right? You need to dim the lights a little bit so you can see. The difference is intensity of light. Now here's a good illustration. If, like in the old projector, it's very low lumens, uh, very low light. So, any light that is brighter than it, even if it's shining, you might not see the wedding. Correct? So, let's say this is a natural light. Okay. The natural light can block out something that is manifest if the manifestation is very, very little light, like the old projector. Remember the equation. V0, which is open vision, equals to 1 over Vn squared. Vn stands for natural vision. So, the more the natural vision, the less the open vision. The more the open vision, the less the natural vision. You learn how to switch between the two. And <clears throat> so we see that when the spiritual light is very bright, like this example of this new projector, natural light can be there and you still can see. You still can see. Let me just do an experiment here. And, uh, okay. Back here. Ah. Look how small the wording is. You think I see it? Ah. Can you read the wording on that, Louis? Let me test your eyesight. What's this word? There you go. You see, it's because it's a bright light. I'm going to stretch you. <laughs> But still pretty bright. Okay. Uh, what is this? This look like See? You can see from that side. Benson can see all the way from the back. This is a fantastic projector. I know this is better than the one in Singapore. And, uh, and, you know, look how small it is. And what was the key? The brightness of the light. The brightness of the light. So, the greater the spiritual light, the greater the manifestation. So, if you want a manifestation to be strong, increase the spiritual light that is flowing through your life. The things that can project Jesus into your heart, into your vision. Learn the secret of how to increase spiritual life. That's that verse. Now let me get it back to normal or bigger size for you. Oh, manifest. It says manifest. By the light. By the light. Oh, right. I'm trying to speak as I see light. Like whatever makes manifest is light. It gives you two points. <coughs> it is caused by the light, but it's actually the light that enables you to see. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, Jesus says, there am I in the midst of them. But Jesus is in the midst of us right now, but you can't see because the tune to natural light. But if you could tune to spiritual light, which I'm tuning now, I can see the image of Jesus 
Now, Jesus is good. He can hide himself if he wants. <laughs> but by his permission. If you tune, as I tune into, you see, you learn V0 equals to 1 over N, Vn squared. So I have to tune out the natural. So as I tune out the natural and I concentrate on the spiritual, the first thing I see is like the fire. Okay? I see a faint fire. Now, that faint fire is standing right in front, here, and then I can tune in more, and depends on how much I want to tune into the spiritual life. For some of you, you need to close your eyes to tune, because it helps to block it. But uh, once you are used to open vision, you don't need to do that. You can switch between the two. And so, then as I tune in, I can see Jesus, and I can see Him smiling at us, because we are teaching about Him. And He wants us to know about Him. You think He doesn't like that? He loves us to know more about Him. Now, Jesus is also in your heart. Did you all pick up that Jesus was standing there? Yes, sir. Did he? Yes, sir. Anybody else? You also pick up he was there? Anybody else? Yeah. Did you? Uh, as you mentioned, then I... Then I, sort of can, I I sense a bright light there. Correct. Correct. So it's, you know, and uh, is that, and depending on the angle in which you see. Yeah. So, because it's like, it's like, uh, like, there's an entrance that he comes in. And sometimes you're catching the trail of his light. The key to anything making manifest is light. In the light, all things are exposed. So you could go anywhere and demons cannot hide. The thing about spiritual light different from natural light is this. Spiritual light is an x-ray. Nothing can block it. Natural light can be blocked. There is no force or form or shape or molecules or any spiritual substance that can hide from the light of God. It just penetrates through. Which is why Satan and the enemy and demons are afraid of the light. So it's important for us to know this principle on the word, funny Lord. See, we're studying through the words to understand more and I'll reach a conclusion. I point to important words that and help us understand. Now here's another one. In Colossians chapter 4, verse 4. Colossians chapter 4, verse 4. It says here, and uh, I need to read verse, verse, um, verse 3 also. Meanwhile, praying also for us, that God will open to us a door for the word to speak the mystery of Christ for which I am also in chain that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. <coughs> he speak about the mystery of Christ. He used the word phanero. And here's another different point. When Paul says, when he speaks, Paul says, he speaks by the Holy Spirit. And he makes known through the speaking. And Paul himself says in 1 Corinthians 2, when he speaks, he speaks by the Spirit, not by the natural man. So when the spiritual man speaks, and Paul is talking about preaching, when he's preaching under the anointing, he says, he makes manifest. Something that we don't realize. Whenever every preacher and everyone will have some level of anointing. And everyone will be given a particular truth to manifest. 
So John Wesley was given the truth of sanctification. To Martin Luther was given the truth of justification by faith. And uh, in the early days of the uh, baptism in the spirit time, some people specialize in baptism in the spirit, some in healing, some in various areas. Now, when a person is anointed to personify a truth, that means they not just preach it, they are the very vessels to bring out the truth. Like Canaan and Yim. What was he to bring forth? Yeah, see? Obvious. Now, what happened? Whenever that preacher is preaching that area or anything he touch on, because they personify those areas, your revelation of faith is increased. Your ability to sense and, like for Hagin, the mystery of faith becomes clearer. Suddenly, you understand the mystery of faith. Because to each person is given a particular manifestation. Manifestation. And uh, <clears throat> the reason why when you sit under this ministry and you have a lot of revelation in different things, because I'm the custodian of the mysteries of God. And so if you want to increase in your manifestation, sleep hearing the sermons that are preached. And you see something affect you. Because the voice carries the ability to make manifest. It has nothing, it, it, it is not, it is not like trying to produce something in you that is not supposed to be there. Like some people think it is like, uh, uh, people see vision because we, we sort of uh, hint to that. It's not like that. It has to do with the anointing. Which is why when people leave this ministry, suddenly they stop having revelations of end times or mysteries. You wonder why? Because some of those who left had open vision, right? They haven't stopped having open vision because it's a default mode. But why no end time revelation? Because they have moved outside the umbrella of the custodian. To each person is given different thing. So if you keep sleeping and hearing, uh, let's say, uh, I don't know whether there's any record of Sadhu Sunda Singh. I'm not talking about Sarah, I'm talking about Aurea. I don't think there's any. Uh, maybe Kevin Kuman. But when you sleep hearing Kevin Kuman, you will begin to have a certain downloads on healing, or ability to sense. So each person is a custodian of different area. And so it's important to not just listen to a sermon with your rational mind. Understand that each sermon is a light. And uh, like you know there are seven colors in a rainbow. Actually there are more colors than that. We just can't see that. And so some people may have really one color. So it depends if a ministry has all the colors. Then you're exposed to that. You will, it will color different things. And if a ministry has only one color, whenever you're under them, let's say a prophetic ministry, all you get is a certain type of prophecy. It cannot resonate in you. Now, how it works is what I call the theory of resonance. That um, it is tuning you. And let's say all of us have an uh, ability to, to hear different sounds. And... Uh, Let's say you're faulty on the G key and a ministry has a resonance of G. By listening, you're being tuned to the G, G note. And then sometimes, you know, you can use this, you know how some people, like good musicians, they can, they can sing a song in the right key straight away. Because you can remember a song in the right key. Let's say if I want to hit the key of G, I'm not that skillful yet as many other musicians. I try to hit a G, I will try to remember the song in G, like say, like Heavenly Father. 
secondary thing helps you to remember rather than you just memorize okay this is D you know do mi so then you go up or down and then you use the do re mi key on yourself which sometimes I do internally to hit a higher note I to bring a song higher so, so like they sing a song like, okay I want to get to the, uh, the next key so uh, you know do re mi fa so la ti do so you go you go higher internally of course and then uh, so you get so inside the okay, that's about the knee. So you try to find a note. It's a good musician find notes and hear notes. So when you hear a sound, you say, okay, I think this is roughly the key of D, E, G. So you can play by ear. No matter what people say, you can eventually find your way into the key and then play for them. Why was only start with? So resonance. Being able to hear resonance, recognize and classify them. So, <coughs> uh, so it's important when you're song leader worshiping, you should know. Uh, otherwise, the musician find it hard to follow you, because you might sing an original song in the wrong key, and it might be too low, too high. The only time that happens to me is when I have to take over a song from whatever key. And some of you think that when I take over in Singapore and continue singing, you think it's easy. It's not that easy. Because I have to take from whatever key they give me and I never tell them what key. If they, if they end with the G, they're going to find songs in the G. If I sing in uh, 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 other keys, it might be too low or too high. So I cannot just sing any song. I need to, in, the, in, in my memory bank, I must roughly remember uh, each song in whatever its original key plus some songs you can sing in more than one key so that you have a, a repertoire of songs it's not that easy and then only that I don't prepare the songs either I have to go out and say Lord what songs do you want to sing from now and uh, I mean there are hundreds of records of me taking over uh, the song it's not as easy as it looks because whenever they pass to me the first thing I have to figure out is what key they are once in a while I figure it wrong and then the song is either too high or too low. Then you know, that's when, you know, <laughs> I mistook that. Sometimes I look at the guitar, the, 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 how they press, I know what key it is. Uh, but for piano, sometimes I cannot see the keys that I play. So I usually learn the guitar. And I, I remember, okay, that guy is playing D. So I remember when I go up, it's still D. <laughs> and uh, so I take songs from D. And then sometimes I have a signal to get them go higher and higher. But sometimes I don't. I got to keep all the songs in D. And uh, then I'm limited to these songs. At one time, you remember in the church second service in Singapore, they give it to me in the key of A minor, and I said, I only sang one song. Then everybody laughed and I said, I don't have many songs in A minor. I could not continue A minor. And they are still not so used to all my signal. Like, you know, you know I got my like. And then uh, I got there, and all these signals, they're still not used to my signals. Otherwise, I could from far away just signal, and they would change the key that I want. Uh, which in time, you know, they get used to my signal. They all have their own signals, so I have my own signal. And uh, so, it is all dealing with sounds, music, and resonance. In the spiritual dimension, everyone vibrates based on a resonance. In this end time move, when you stand in five of all the offices and you operate all the gifts, you go all the resonance. Long ago, before this move, people would operate in like one ministry gift. 
and only the resonance of that comes through. And you cannot tune you. You need to be good at all the resonance to help someone into the same resonance. Because here's the secret. <coughs> Every vision has its own key. And there are different types of vision that you see. And it depends on the level of light that you see. Like for example, you know that all light is photons. And photons are both waves and particles. And depending on the frequency and wavelength of the photon, actually the wavelength, that is the color you see. So the color we see has nothing to do with the actual photon. It has to do with us. Because all the photon know is how much energy it has. The higher energy photons tend to look purplish and invisible to us. The lower frequency tend to look infrared or reddish. That is how our eyes recognize frequency and energy level. Now, everything in the natural has its counterpart from the spiritual, correct? Which means that even open visions is only one slot of a frequency. And if a person by default can see demons, then they have what I call the human spirit frequency. That means they can see people's spirit who have died and demons at that level because why demons come to that level? Because they want to affect human spirit. You got to be same frequency to affect the same frequency. Remember the dog whistle? The high pitch whistle? You blow? We hear nothing. But to the dog, it's very noisy. <coughs> because it's about 20,000 vibrations per second. And anything below 16 vibrations per second, most people can't hear. So our range is from 20 vibrations per second to 20,000 vibrations per second. But to the dog, they can hear higher frequency. This is talking about sound wave. And you know that sometimes some people are colorblind. They cannot see certain colors because their eyes are lacking the uh, things that recognize the color. So their brain will interpret the color as just like gray or brown because they just cannot see red or green or certain color. It's an internal organic problem. They need a creative miracle. So for them, those colors don't exist. Those colors don't exist because they can't see. The realm of manifestation has different spiritual frequencies. And do you know that inner vision frequency is higher frequency than open vision? It's higher frequency. Remember this statement made by Kenneth E. Hagin. Trying to remember which book. Either in his book, The Anointing of the Spirit, or in his book, How to Be Led by the Spirit. Either of these books. A long time since I read those books. But I remember this statement. Jesus was teaching him about visions. And Jesus was the one who told him there are three types of vision. Open vision, where you can see both the natural and the spiritual at the same time. Closed vision, which is in a trance, where your physical senses are closed and you only see the spiritual side. Inner vision, which is something you see on your inside. And sometimes you only see when your eyes are closed, if you are not trained. Remember that. And then don't forget the other sentence Jesus said. Jesus said, the highest vision are inner vision. 
And the lowest vision is open vision. You remember that? Yes. And if Leo we hear Leo from Australia, <coughs> Leo is you might not know, know him, but when you meet him in September, he's very well read. He's <coughs> very, very well read. He read a lot of books. Uh, he's a very well read man. He might be quiet but very well read. He will be able to tell you which book. It's a slightly different from Colin's new dictionary, I call it. Yeah. Colin loves to analyze words and the Bible and all that. And so we have that people forgot about that little statement Jesus made after that. But from the spiritual realm, that is it. So don't underestimate your high frequency inner vision. Because, you know why it's higher? It is seeing a higher level of dimension. Which sometimes, uh, some people with open vision cannot see some of my other angels. They only see certain angels who choose to come down to the vibration level of the human spirit. They need to do that because it's energizing me. At that same frequency. And they can see Abu Relal merge inside, like a bright light, because he's energizing my spirit man with the spirit of wisdom. But there are other angels of a higher frequency that they can't see, that I know and I'm aware of. If I tune to the higher frequency, I could see that. And once you have been through the throne room, you know why sometimes, wasn't it you who went to the throne room, you couldn't see the top, you can only see the legs? Because it's a higher frequency. It takes time to adjust. Once you can see and adjust to the throne room frequency, you can see all the frequencies. So learn to go to the throne room. Emerge yourself there. Merge yourself and absorb all the frequencies that are there because all frequencies begin, start and end at the throne. It's the throne room that pumps energy throughout the universe. So the, then we have this, where Paul talked about that I may make it manifest. You say, well, how can Paul you make something manifest? To preaching. To preaching. And then different sermons sometimes have a stronger anointing in one area. Like you hear the sermons on healing or during the miracle services, the healing anointing frequency will be stronger. When you hear like a Q&A or like Bible teaching line by line, the teaching anointing is stronger. When you hear prophecy, the prophetic anointing is stronger. So you learn to operate in different frequencies as you expose yourself to the frequency. And, uh, so don't just hear a sermon getting the rational points. Jesus said, my words are spirit and they are life. John 6, 63. The same way, when we speak <coughs> by the utterance of the Holy Spirit, we are releasing spiritual life. <coughs> and spiritual life contains spiritual life. It increases the frequency of that dimension. Which is why if you keep hearing through the outpouring, it will continue in your life and bring you into the manifestations of your life. <coughs> <coughs> that is uh, exploring the word manifest up to Colossians chapter 4 verse 4. <coughs> Any others? Okay. Well, uh, some of the others are interesting, but they talk more of like levels of progress, which we know. <coughs> and Jesus has his own timing to manifest himself. Let's look at 1 Timothy 6, verse 15. <coughs> 1 
Timothy 6, 15. It says here, <coughs> which he will manifest in his own time. He who is the blessed and only Pentate, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, who alone has immortality, dwelling in unapproachable light. This is Jesus in his fullness. Whom no man has seen or can see, to whom be honor and everlasting power. Amen. <coughs> So here we give the finale verse as uh, Jesus dwelling in unapproachable light. Thank you. So if we look at all the verses, let's come to some conclusions here. I've outlined number one, there are different levels and frequencies of manifestation. <coughs> what I can let you know is this. Jesus is manifesting himself all the time. You have to just be able to pick up the frequency he chooses to manifest. Sometimes he manifests himself in a low frequency, mid-range frequency, or highest frequency. But at all times, Jesus' desire is that we know him. We could sense Him, we could sense His presence in whatever frequency. <coughs> Number two, it takes training to operate in some of those frequencies. By default, some of your voices are more comfortable in E, in D, in G. You see, we could take a range of your voice. Let's say, Enoch, give me your low note. Say, oh. Okay, give me your highest. some of us are more emotional. Some of us are more engineering, scientific. Some of us are more artistic. 
These are actually all frequencies. If you read Marita Davis' book on children going to paradise, <coughs> one of the things is the angels carry these little infants to children paradise. And when they reach children paradise, they look at them and classify them into which frequency. Because each is already radiating their frequency. So the advantage is the children could strong from infant go into the training of the frequency that they were made to. Then later on they can grow into other frequency. You read the book, it's mentioned inside. And <clears throat> how nice if only the earthly education system is like that. That people can pick whatever frequency we are when as a child and then nurture us in that area. And so from that area, you develop all other areas. Every one of you have a natural area in your spirit to see at a certain frequency. Do not despair. Some of it is close to the dream level, between dream and sleep for most people. And then, it depends on how intellectual you are. The more rational you are, the less you can see in the open vision side. But you can see more when you are in the dream state and then you need to develop that why do you think Acts chapter 2 quotes Joel chapter 2 that says young men shall see visions old men shall dream dream and of course the word dream is the word in Agnion which is not the normal Greek word for dream which is the word Ona so the word dream dreams is not talking about uh, being asleep type of dream. The word inaknion is like a daydream. So why does it mention young men shall see vision, old men shall dream dream? Why? It cannot, uh, of course, it's a joke for some people that say because old men sleep more. <laughs> In fact, from what I know, old men sleep less. Young men sleep more. They sleep 10 hours. You know, the, the, the older folks only sleep 4 hours. So not true. And moreover, the Greek word is not the word ona, which talks about sleeping dream. In Abnion. Why? Yes. <coughs> Correct. As you develop in the doctrine and thinking, even though you may start wherever, everyone grow wise as they grow old. They got more experience. There is a certain frequency that you can tap on. With the young, they are more visual. And there's a different frequency. These are all different frequencies by which light, a spiritual light, functions. So point two, we talk about different levels of growth in different frequencies. Point one, we say from God's side, God also chooses to manifest in different frequencies. All angels have different frequencies. And then from our side, we can grow in different frequencies. And then we recognize the different levels of frequencies. Uh, each of the different levels. On top of that, you add a third point, and... Uh, <coughs> Let me see how the phrase, um, the third point, uh, I mean, we give all the scriptures, we're just concluding, bringing all of it together. And uh, in the third point, there is the interplay of the anointing within and anointing upon. The anointing within, the Bible says, teaches you all things. 1 John 2.20. Then there's anointing upon. These are all two different channels of energizing. You are either energized from within or energized from without. The best is to be energized by both. Whatever level of vision you are seeing, if you are energized by both within and without, it will always be the clearest. 
So sometimes your visions are super clear, let's say like this, because it is energized from within and from a point. But when it is energized from within only, it might lose half its luminance. You should not worry about it. Say, hey, why my vision now so so blur? Or, or, or not as clear as before. Because before the anointing of Paul might not be operating. And then it can also be energized by just the anointing upon. And it uh, is again half its clarity. So when both combine together, it is super clear. <coughs> uh, those that are energized by anointing upon in the Bible are, for example, when Peter had the vision on the rooftop while praying. The spirit came on for him and he was in a trance. He, he saw nothing except the vision. There is an anointing upon operating. It was a special word that God was giving him. And it was a gift of vision, discerning of spirit that he was seeing. <coughs> so there is an anointing upon. And then an example. Anointing within one would be 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And Paul says, towards the last verse, we see the invisible. We see the things which are not seen. That's talking about, he's always seeing it from the anointing within. As you know, Paul's spirit man was very well developed. Now when both are operating together, within and upon, it is the most powerful. It is the most powerful. And uh, I believe the book of Revelations that John was receiving was both within and upon. All his visions inside were very clear. I have visited and look at how he sees it within and upon. It's super clear. Because it was a whole book of Revelations being written. So, usually when men of God write epistles, they are anointing within its flowing. And then sometimes anointing upon. And so a whole book has to be written, is anointing within and upon. So you have all types of uh, uh, visions in the Bible. I classify the three, three types of vision and then different degrees of revelation. Uh, the types of vision only talk about the medium or the resonant, higher or lower. And uh, open vision is the lowest because it's operating at a low frequency. And uh, then in terms of revelation, the highest is actually inner vision because it vibrates very, very high. And so it's deep inside you, something deep on your inside. And uh, so these three points, remember that tonight when we off the lights, and you begin to pray until 6 a.m. in the morning. Have a good time with the Lord praying. Any questions before we end? Martin is about the other question. I saw a bubble appear over you. <laughs> now, how do I tell people's thoughts? It's a human level, inner frequency. So, uh, Thoughts that are there, and uh, uh, like like from there, I could jump straight to Justian and the same thinking. And Singapore features in some of his thinking. I can see, pick up some things in your talks, but not all. Sometimes I, I'm allowed to zoom in. Remember, Jesus knew their thoughts because thoughts is a frequency. And remember this: there are no private thoughts. Do you know that all your thoughts are recorded? And if you think people don't know your thoughts now, we will be the good of heaven. <laughs> Put the archive of your life. We will not just see what you do, what you feel and what you think. So get used to it. There is no privacy. You might as well live your whole life for God. And the Lord is my life. 
know, I am who I am. I enjoy every of your creation and let all my thoughts be your thoughts. Yeah. You got your question formulated really. Yes. Adam before the fall. Adam before the fall. <coughs> they would not be able to tune in. And Correct. Fight. It's the same. It's the same. Yeah. You see, Adam was naked before he fell. He was naked after he fell. Because both verses say he was naked. But he knew he was naked only after the fall. Correct? Because he lost a life. The life was his clothing. And unless you got the same frequency of light, you cannot see through the light. You see a layer of light all covering it. <coughs> yes? Yeah, you're well, thinking about your baby and children. Yeah. Uh, uh, this morning, uh, I was listening to one of your messages. Basically, yes. it's when you start to look like the Kenneth Hagen's uh, one ticket that he had, and then you, you went on uh, to give more. And then I fell asleep, and then I just continued hearing the... Uh, oh, my preaching continued while you were asleep. Ah, that's good. Resonant. You appeared in the, you appeared in the dream there. Mm. And uh, you're smiling. And you like, you know, like you gave her a thumbs up. And you said like three things, but I couldn't, I can't remember them. Smile, I'm listening to you again. And then, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you mentioned like three things, but I can't remember them. You can't remember them. I can't remember them. Okay, your spirit will remember them. Yeah. And um, I'm trying to enter into the vision and pick up from where you are. Were you listening to something about faith and visualization? What area were you listening? Um, I was listening to where you where you were speaking about how like uh, people pray like for many of stuff. Uh, people pray like for stuff that's like for food, clothing, and shelter, etc. And then how to focus like your prayer and like what to focus on, etc. And all that stuff. And at the time, I was uh, I, I was sort of thinking on it was like faith and and visual uh, faith and visualization yes. because. I was thinking on, on, on the stuff that we shared like in the one-on-one -on -one, and it was the, like the one point where like the two are going to run parallel and there was ways of how I'm going to sort of you know do my devotions around this and like uh, and pray around this and so uh, I took a tape on and you were saying some stuff there and then and you fell asleep I fell asleep and then dreams started coming out about two dreams and then in the one you showed up because all I can pick up when I go into that it has something to do with faith and visualization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I think when you're listening to faith and visualization, because he's talking about activating faith through visualization. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Those are the points. <coughs> yes, Benson. Because sometimes we need that to see the level, what demons are doing yeah, and what human spirits are like. <clears throat> for my, uh, for for what I understand, if I have the higher one, I should be able to see something that is low. Not always. Not always. It still must be developed. That is why some people, uh, <clears throat> when they pray, they can see certain visions. But they are not aware of demons around them. 
I sat in meetings with people and a demon is next to them and they don't know. In, in some of the unfair trials that people have put me through, I keep making this sentence. I think it, some of the trials were recorded in March. I keep saying, I can see things that you all don't realize I can see. I was trying to give them a clue that their thoughts are being fed by demons. Which I could see, but they cannot see. So, it is, and, and, and they claim to operate at the intellectual level, and the scriptural level, trying to reason. But they don't realize that some of their reasoning was energized by the enemy because they're blind to it. So it's important to be able to see both low frequencies and high frequencies because the demons operate at a low frequency to disturb and enter the thoughts of man. One day the judgment it will be replayed and God will confirm what I saw that there are actually a certain level of demons operating during the time of the persecution and confusion. Which is why people were confused. Because it's like a chain about their head and it tightened. And then the enemy is using it to funnel thoughts into them uh, to come against me. And so they can see the demons. And I keep trying to give clues that there are demons there. You know what everyone should do? They should stop and say, let's us all just pray about then their minds will be clear, the demons are gone, and worship, then they can see clearly. But nobody is doing any prayer. Instead, they are doing all the accusation. Again, okay. when the Sanhedrin council was, was putting Jesus on trial, ah, the book Marita Davis, you know the group of people approaching to arrest Jesus? In the book, it was with a spiritual dimension, as the people in the soldiers, temple soldiers come to arrest Jesus with Judas Iscariot leading the way, above them were a horde of demons. The human being don't know. But the children's fight I can see. The darkness above them. Oh, hundreds of demons. So it is important to be aware of all levels of frequency. It doesn't mean that you can see the higher one that you therefore can see the lower one. We need to develop both. It's not automatic. What we say is, if you can see Jesus in His full glory, then you can see all. Because some people are tuned to the higher level because, sorry, this is just a joke, their ears are like a dog. <laughs> that doesn't mean they can see the lower frequency. They, can, they might not hear. You know, they don't have insect ears, cannot hear lower frequency. Uh, insect ears can hear, you know, below 16 vibrations per second. And so any movement they can detect. <coughs> yes. Now, if the level of light determines um, the level of frequency one can see, yes. uh, um, by analogy, if the light is higher, that means the frequency is high. Why should the demons you know, come close? It is just like, um, you know, when they use the UV light to shine on the dollar note to detect whether it's genuine or not, you can't see the other wording. Correct? Because everything has to be dark and then you shine. So it only operates at that level. So it's just like being able to see purple, but you can't see green, blue, yellow, and red. So it's just like being able to see the UV level, but cannot see any other color.
uh, is always manifest at the highest frequency. From time to time, he lowers his frequency for us to know him. So let's say uh, we all uh, see that Jesus is here. Then can somebody else see Jesus? He is moved from here, no? He's no more on this well, side. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, because he's God, he can be omnipresent. He can be omnipresent. He's at the moment he never left his throne. Because he's God, he can manifest at any place without leaving his throne. Yes, Benzen. They saw a fake manifestation of Jesus, like the devil manifestation of Jesus in the spiritual. Interesting. As an angel of light, the Bible is saying Corinthians, Satan can manifest as an angel of light. And yes, he can, and there are some people who cannot recognize him. In fact, in some of the downloads, uh, during the time of the uh, Sydney case, uh, there was a download when in the spirit some of them were thinking they were doing something for Jesus but it was a fake Jesus. Remember the download? Fake Jesus. Just the interaction. With Jesus. Eh? Interaction with fake Jesus. Yes, they were interacting with a fake Jesus. So it's true that there will be a fake Jesus. I would have to say yes to that, but not not that accurate, of course, in his manifestation. And uh, as you know, a lot of this worship of idolatry, uh, where fake Mary appear or fake Jesus appear, and cause them to worship a piece of wood, an artifact, a picture, or something, that were not real. Because Jesus will never promote idolatry. But, if one is born again and there is the Spirit of God, it is, I can say that, that if one is not deceived, it is impossible to, for the fake uh, angel, uh, angel uh, a fallen angel to appear as an angel of light, or fake Jesus to appear as a, as, a, as a real Jesus because deception has to start from the inside. So if your inside is not deceived and you can see all colors, impossible to fake. Impossible to fake. Yeah. So how do you guide your heart from being deceived? By making sure our heart is clean. John 15 verse 3. And pure. Three words, or one word, make it easier. L O V E. A heart without love is already deceived. Actions without love. So the first thing, remember the modus operandi of the plastic tree. Anger. And Jesus has associated anger with hell in the Sermon on the Mount. Paul also has associated, associated anger with the devil in the book of Ephesians. Anger. Anger and irritation. So whenever you're angry and irritated, go and pray through first. Don't take action. And don't make a decision. People make stupid decisions when they're angry. Then they regret eternally and then cannot get back. I always tell people, when you're angry and upset, that's not the time to make a decision. Make no decision. Go and fast, you know, three weeks, three one day. Until you get love in your heart, then you say, okay, well, I make a decision, then you make a better decision.
also be viewed. You can read it, can see. I can see darkness in people. Uh, all the negative things has different degree of darkness. There's black and there's black, 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 black. <laughs> different degrees of blackness. Yeah. For some reason, I don't know why all the energy one looks dark. Maybe because for us, we're in the light, we see him as dark. But here's a strange thing. The enemy doesn't see dark as dark. They see it as light. Because their eyes and their deception. So in hell, I think it's Mary Baxter's hell, someone's hell. Uh, I think it's Mary Baxter. Or one of these. Where where like the kings and they were like deceiving one another in hell trying to like be bombastic and uh, pompous trying to show off but when the light come then they were revealed to be very ugly but to each other they look very handsome and beautiful under the light comes the light of God so they can't see each other through because they only see in darkness yeah, that's how Satan can only appear as an angel of light or a fake Jesus to those who don't have the true light. <coughs> the true light is x ray, see through, yes. Can I have a question? Basically, here is the white light basically uh, can be uh, dissected in every single fragrance frequency from a uh, white, it can get basically to the prism, it can be in the all the frequencies, but the black light cannot emit anything. So can it be, therefore, that the dark, they appear dark because they cannot just absorb any light, like in the spiritual, you said, that the natural has also the power of the spiritual? Possible, except that the different levels of darkness, they are there. So, remember, the expert at deception is the plastic tree. So during the time that that of the the trial, they make it even like a joke. Yes. The people under the plastic tree make this statement. You know, now everything plastic tree, plastic tree, you know, it's like a joke. But they themselves are under the influence of plastic tree. How we humans are so clever to talk. That's why only the judgment day reveal everything. Just nothing before it's time. So people under the plastic tree might be joking even about the plastic tree without realizing they are under the plastic tree. And during that time, they were joking about the plastic tree. Like it's nothing. But it's so clear from the downloads. The amount of deception the plastic tree had. And the, the main figure was a plastic tree. And they used different people. Plus, you saw the fallen angel from the universe. The four of them came down. Then the other thing was um, uh, besides the four fallen angel, um, the, the, the humans are so blind to, they don't realize that Satan is right at the door, like like Abel, uh, Abel and Cain. Cain was told, sin is at your door, and he still doesn't realize it. Uh, already at the door. Sure. Yeah. <coughs> yes? I said that short. Oh, okay, you're going to say something? Yes. I'm, um, the demonic realm is real and it affects people's thoughts. A lot of people who are angry and irritated don't realize that there's a human level, but they go another level is a demonic level. And the expertise of the fallen uh, plastic tree is behind enemy line infiltration. We are his enemy. The plastic tree specializes in behind enemy line. He doesn't have a frontal attack. 
his is my staff I take from inside by making people angry irritated upset and it can be over natural thing okay when do you know when God was not happy with Miriam and Aaron when they were angry at Moses because the plastic tree was behind but they were actually angry because they were not happy with Mrs. Moses that was an excuse but it was an enemy behind and the reason why God was not happy with David was not just because he murdered indirectly uh, Uriah uh, and also he committed adultery with Shema. Also because, remember the statement God says, you have allowed my enemies, God's enemies, to scorn him. And David didn't know. When he was angry, see David was very angry and, and upset with Uriah because that was a plastic tree. And we know that the plastic tree came into Israel after that and dominated the kings from then onwards. And the plastic tree is the same one who was attacking Paul in uh, the fallen angel in Second Second Corinthians chapter twelve. He said Satan sent a messenger. That messenger is the plastic tree. And you examine it very carefully. The Jews who went against him had one thing in common. Jealousy and anger. And then he said in First Thessalonians that Satan hindered us. And you look at the whole Acts, they were a bunch of angry Jews. And remember the Jews who stole Stephen? Stephen was preaching. They covered their ears and then ran as a mad people against him. Plastic tree. You could trace anger all the way through. When Moses was hit the rod the second time, he was indirectly had a one thought from the plastic tree. He was angry at the Israelite people. So if you trace anger, it started from Cain. Remember Cain was angry? Cain was the first murderer. It started from Cain. And from then onwards, every human being that is angry, Jesus says, if you call, curse your brother, and you call your brother Raka, he says, watch it, hellfire. Not my words, Jesus' words. So anger has, from the, the plastic tree was there from the time of Cain until his end time. I already thought on that, correct? After the episode of the uh, former Seven Thunders, I went on a teaching to talk about the models of primary and warn people be careful about being angry. And yet, two years later, people can be angry. Hearing, but never hear. Oh. And remember, the enemy will shift from one half-truth to another half-truth. David was angry at Uriah because Uriah refused to go home. So he can cover his sin. Cain was angry at Abel because God didn't accept his sacrifice. Moses was angry at the people because, you know, he just cannot stand them anymore. Miriam and Aaron were angry at Moses because of Mrs. Moses. And it was partly racial prejudice because the skin was darker. They have 1,001 reasons for being angry. But the anger came from the same source. Thou, if we were to add the 11th commandment, thou shalt not be angry, lest thou yield to the enemy. It's more like Ephesians chapter 4. You know, don't let the sun go down on your anger. Next verse, 
give no place to the devil. Paul knew that. So I pray from now onwards till the end, and unfortunately it's going to replay itself from 2027 to 2034. We will have a group of angry people who by that time is very proud because they have done some miracles and they have influence and they thought their anger can justify something. Unfortunately, people can be so blind. We teach about anger and people still can get angry. Say, oh, your servant angry, anger? It made me angry. <laughs> Not supposed to do that. It's supposed to make you more loving. And teach us to walk in love all the time. Yeah. So is love the only way how we can shut the doors before us? Yes. The love, the love cover a multitude of sin. Whenever, you know, think about why you get angry. Let me give you your reasons for getting angry. Number one, self-righteousness. You put yourself higher than the other person. If anyone can put himself higher than any person, it's the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know how many of us are on earth making Jesus angry now? A lot, right? Which means that Jesus should be sitting on his throne with a very angry face. <laughs> because there's someone making Jesus angry all the time, correct? All the billions of people. You know when he's not? Nothing can make Jesus angry. He's always loving. He covers a multitude of sins. So self-righteousness because the other person has done things that are wrong. But just because the other person did something wrong gives me no right to be angry at him because I'm not the judge. Jesus is the judge. I'm just a fellow servant. Who am I to judge my brother who fall? My sister who fall? Someone who makes mistake. And and here's the thing, you cannot be angry and humble at the same time. Try it. Try it. Try to be humble and angry at the same time. Impossible. Which tells you, number two, all anger has pride. Except we hide our pride. We got all kinds of pride. The hidden pride, all kinds of pride. Pride comes in a thousand and one forms. Millions of ways. So whenever you feel upset and angry, just remember, this is just your own pride. It's an opportunity to recognize you got pride in your life and say, Jesus, please teach me to be humble. And you just found one more area why you're not humble. That's all. Between now and then Jesus come, every one of you will be still get irritated. You will still find some areas in your life that will upset you. You still have some areas or situations that make you angry. And when you do, come to Jesus and say, Sorry Lord, I still got pride. Once you renounce your right to be angry, number three, you are cured. You not only renounce your right to judge, which many people have, but they haven't renounced their right to feel angry. In the first place, this is not your kingdom. <laughs> if it's your kingdom, you've got a right to be angry. Right? We all serve it. So, renounce your right to be angry. I have done it. Join me. I didn't say you won't feel angry at times. I didn't say that there are no situations that make upset and angry. Being human, you might be caught off guard. But, when you feel it, you know where to go. You go to a quiet place, 
and say down, Lord, they must have stayed with pride, otherwise they won't feel this way. The other area, fourth is, when you have unconditional love, and your love is exactly like the love of the Father, you will never have any anger left. <coughs> or even the ability to feel upset. Do you know why Jesus is a judge? <coughs> and Jesus is a God manifest in creation. When you go to an uncreated universe, anger does not exist. Now, never once in the whole Bible will you see the Father angry. You will see the general word, God is grief, God is angry, all that. All those stories are God subcontract judgment and anger to his angels or to our Lord Jesus. Because the Father cannot have one subatomic particle of anger without being the Father. That's the one thing I found out about our Father. Not even for a nanosecond has our Father even been angry. His feelings of love for us is absolute. Think about it. God is so big. What can you do as a tiny creation to make Him angry? What can you do as a tiny creation that He did not expect you to do? Okay, some of you have children. You expect your children to do dumb things, make mistakes. Because you're the parent, you know how children grow through mistakes. Children fall. Children do silly things. Because they are children. One day they grow up, they don't do childish things anymore. That's how the father sees us. The worst of us is like a tiny child. That's all. And he sees all sin and imperfection as a lack of growth. That's the eyes of our Father. God help us if Father can ever get angry. The whole uncreated universe will split into two. All judgment and attributes of anger has been subcontracted to a disciplinary angels of judgment and to our Lord Jesus on the judgment day. That's why it's limited. Do you know how long the judgment day lasts? One day. It's called the day of judgment. Do you find it having days of judgment? Because the Lord compressed, of course that one day might be long, but one day. <coughs> One day in the whole of eternity. Fair enough, right? Because why do we need to be judged? Because we have to account for our life. There must be an accounting, it's a proper system. So God gave one day. That's all. <coughs> one day. In between that part, any judgment rendered by the angels are to preserve the innocent. Like when he judged in Noah's time, when the angels intervene, is to stop the whole earth from self-destruction. That's all. But he only gave one day for total judgment. But he himself personally at that. Isn't it wonderful to know our Father? After today's sermon, I hope I eradicate, eradicated every subatomic particle of anger and irritation in your life. be more like a father. Yes? I'm a little bit confused with you. Um, how to say the truth to somebody or to a Christian who is doing things wrong is actually coming out from the door. And because you are saying that we shouldn't judge. Yes. 
So how to review? I think we should help, at least help him. Definitely, I agree. Yes, but how to say it? How to let him know that what he's doing is not right according to the man? Good point. I know. <clears throat> The Bible tells us in the that um, when we correct someone, uh, we must correct in the spirit of meekness. Meekness. It is not the content of your correction that is important. Is the spirit behind the correction? From what I know, most people correct out of anger and irritation. Behind it, behind all anger is pride. And think about it: if you do that, you will win the argument, but you lose the person. To God, which is important, winning the argument. Or winning a person. That is why God never argued with us. He just died on the cross for us and says, Believe us. Then later I argue with you. <laughs> and show you how wrong you are. If God came down and showed us how wrong we are, we will be so condemned, we will jump into hell twice. Correct? So God is not interested in winning the argument because he knows he's going to win anyway. Who can out-argue God? Who knows every molecule? But the more important thing is to win a person by love first. So the Bible says, yes, correct. We, we need to correct a person. But it says, you must correct in the spirit of humility and meekness. You can quote the Bible, you know, sort of like iron sharpen iron and all those things, right? But iron sharpen iron is not talking about correction. Because iron sharpen iron is two irons crossing. I mean the other person is <coughs> argumentative also. So he's talking about two people who know how to reason with each other and they're crossing swords. It's good to debate. It's good to reason. God says, come let us reason together. There's a time for reasoning. But reasoning is not safe us. Instead, we are to correct each other in the spirit of humility and make so is the spirit behind that is more important? Win the person by love first, then show the person that they are wrong later. Because then you save the person. When the person is drowning, and they get, let's say, 10 minutes to live in the water, because the water is taking down, down a waterfall full of rocks, and so they're trying to swim against the current and they're struggling. Of course, if he fell down, he made a mistake, correct? Nobody would have been in that situation if he didn't make a mistake. Right? Sure, some mistake that I made went too near the edge. Maybe trying to do a selfie. <laughs> you know? Or maybe done something that has brought the person in a situation. Can you imagine the person is drowning, 10 minutes to leave before he falls off the cliff, and you're standing on the shore and say, let me tell you where you go wrong. <laughs> Firstly, you should not have done this, 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 this. And the person, yeah, yeah, I, I mean. <laughs> Secondly, you know, you should have listened to all the advice given to you. Have you read all those books that I gave to you? Do you actually know where you're done wrong? <laughs> it is. By the time you finish your fifth point, 
Я говорю, ну ладно, процент. Хорошо. Мы должны treat every person who makes mistake and every sinner as a person who still needs to grow. Look at it from God's point of view. I'm still learning to be perfect in that area. But mind you, many people are afraid of me, you know why? Because they say one thing, why hard to out-reason him? But wait, if you can reason with the word, I listen. But here's the thing. In my situation, I don't use reason to tell people they are wrong. I use love. In my position, I can reason with a person to point out where they go wrong, if they are willing to listen. But I don't use that. I use that only when we are sitting on the same bench, we are hugging each other side by side, and we're talking about the things of God, and the person say, you know, pastor or brother, you know, or dad, can you tell me how to improve myself? Then I'm talking. But when you have made a mistake and you're going down the street, and you're about to fall off the cliff, even with the mind and, and wisdom God gives, I will not do that to you. The first thing is, I want you to know, let's get out of the street. Let's get some dry clothes on you. Let's get you into a safe place. And then, even then, I won't talk. I say, one day if you're going to talk, we'll talk. But right now, it's not the time. Just rest, just you know, enjoy your life. Just, just do one day, you know, when the time comes, then we can talk. Important, right? So the more leadership, wisdom, authority, and power God gives you, the more unconditional love you must have. Do you know why? Put it this way. If really leadership is based on wisdom and ability to see, correct? Then the higher we are spiritually, the more we can see wrong. Right? I can see the mistakes of people when they don't know there's a mistake. If let's say you're an expert, <coughs> let's say a Martin is the best painter in the universe or in our lifetime, better than Leonardo da Vinci, let's say. That means he can judge Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo and anyone because he's the best of the best of the best, correct? By virtue of him being the best of the best of the best, he can see the mistakes of everybody else. Isn't that true? So the higher we are spiritually, the more we are sitting close to the throne of God, the throne of God. Isn't it obvious to you that that person up there can see everything? Don't talk about Jesus yet. The reason I don't talk about Jesus is because everyone knows Jesus. Jesus is so kind, so loving, so everything can act. But let's talk about humans. We humans. Let's talk about you all. You're among the 500. You'll be the top 500 among 6 billion people. What about those among the 4? 4 plus 4. The 12, the 30s, the 70s. Obviously, you'll be more anointed. You'll be in a spiritual position higher, both now and eternity. It's obvious you can see more wrong than other people can see. The higher you are, you can see 1,000 wrong. Someone at a low age among of the 6 billion people, his number is uh, 5 billion, 5, He's just, you know, just so old by the age. You can see only 10 wrongs. That is why I ask you this question. Jesus is seeing a million and billion, billion, zillion wrongs all the time. And Jesus is seeing a thousand ways everyone is making him angry. But do you see Jesus with an angry face? You only see Jesus with a loving face. Because this is the key. The true spiritual authority is based on the currency of love. You actually might potentially have authority. 
but you will not have the authority exercise because God preserves it until you grow to the same level of love. And love is not just a feeling. You'll be tested in how you show your love to the person next to you. Remember the, the person is. Jesus said, you know, these are the two greatest commandments. Love God and love your neighbor. Some bright spark say, who is my neighbor? The neighbor is anyone in your circle of life. The story of the good Samaritan. The neighbor is anyone across your path. Remember, there are two persons who are different. The high priest and the Levite. They came before the Samaritan. Remember what they did? They walked, walk, walk. They went across the road. Hey, they don't want to be neighbor. Jesus' story, very good. They saw this guy beaten, blue and black, bleeding, dying. On their path, if they walk straight, they will have to come across this person. They cross the road. <laughs> Technically, the person is no more the neighbor. Because he crossed the road. Who is my neighbor indeed? So here's the thing. True spiritual authority is love. Kindness, peace, meekness. That is true spiritual authority. Which is why I always tell people the secret. Exercise your authority in a way nobody feels oppressed. That is true spiritual authority. If you exercise your authority so people really feel oppressed, <laughs> You might be in the wrong kingdom. It's either Egyptian kingdom and your pharaoh. Or the devil's kingdom. Where they're always pushing down people. The kingdom of God. Anyone here feel that Jesus is a dictator? But he is. He's judge, jury and executioner. We don't feel it because of his love. So the next time you feel angry at one another person, just remember this. The parable of the person of the Stephen whom Jesus forgave. The greater debt. Then the Stephen, after he was forgiven a debt, he went and was strangling the other person. And just and the master said, I forgive you, you cannot forgive him. Cast him out into outer darkness. He lost his salvation. Because heaven is based on love. If you don't have the basic attributes of love, heaven doesn't belong to you. You belong to the whole universe. <coughs> I don't know how we got into this subject, but it's a good subject. <laughs> We are talking about um, the importance of love and growth in love. Yes. I have a question. Ephesians 4, 26. The Paul says, uh, be angry and, and sin not. Yes. Yes. So here's that, here's that. And the next verse says, give no place to the devil. Yes. Yeah. The sentence hasn't ended. Yeah. It confirms. The Bible does show that anger and hellfire are related, yes. Can I share a testimony? My landlord shared the testimony of his father who was <coughs> Or two, or even three days later, the dad will call them up. 
remember you have done this wrong, so it is time for punishment. But because he's so many days apart, so he's actually, if he loves the boy, he will tell them, I need to teach you to learn a lesson that in life, everything has its consequence. Yeah. Therefore, he will punish them and he will wake them with it himself. Every one of them, okay? And, uh, but he, they always remember him, even now he's like six years later, and they are also old now. But they always remember the dad was never angry with them. So I thought this was a very good lesson. He felt that it is because of his uh, upbringing, he felt that they learned that in life there's all these consequences. So be careful what you do. That's something he did for me. He didn't need to share with me today. Yeah. Very good point. Yes, yeah, so I thought the sister may not want to learn this and because they're too young kids. Yes, if we do need to discipline children. But we never do it out of anger. Yeah. Yes. So when we see uh, Jesus being very stern, but turning the tables, etc., is the sternness of the business he was evil. Is it kind of something that that is without anger, but it comes out to be very stern? Yes. Remember the story of Kenneth Hagin in his book, After Dream in Visions? He has looked into the eyes of Jesus and he has seen the love that is present in the eyes of Jesus. He says it's like a river of love. He only see one time Jesus wasted. When he was in a meeting, after Jesus gave him the anointing, and then he found a fire go from hand to hand, so he knew it was a demon. So he commanded the demon to come out. Then he told the man in the chapter called If. He says, See if you can bend. And then the man tried, cannot. He tried several times. They did it several times. Then in the end, like they gave up, and the man was walking back because his back cannot bend. So he's walking slowly back. Then Jesus <coughs> appeared to Kenahidu. No one can see Jesus except Kenahidu. So they heard the words from his side, but they didn't hear the words from Jesus' side. It's a one-sided conversation. Saint Jesus was invisible. And then, everybody knew something supernatural was happening, because uh, the man was half halfway going, and he stopped, because he heard the conversation also. So Jesus appeared and said to him, I told you when you cast them out in my name, they will go. So Hagin says, yes I did, Lord. But, but it did happen. Then Jesus came nearer and more stirred. I told you if you cast them out in my name, they will go. Then again, getting a bit scared, saying, you know, yes, I did, you know. But it did happen because he received anointing. Then Jesus came nearer and then says, a very strict voice, I told you. That if you cast out in Jesus, my name, they will go. And this time he answered meekly, Yes, Lord, but they didn't go. Then Jesus, one last time, put his finger between his eyes and he said, He had never seen Jesus' eyes like that. Like fire in his eyes. It's like Jesus' angry kind of thing. But they didn't show it that way. Jesus says, I say in my name they will come out. He put his fingers in good and then Jesus disappeared. Shoo. So he was stunned for a moment. Then suddenly he knew. He called the man back. Pray for him. <coughs> and this time he removed the word if. He said, Bang in Jesus' name. And the man instantly got healed. So sometimes Jesus used that to good effect. But that's the most you can see him. He is this. He, he, some things don't please him. You see, even in his earthly life, sometimes he got irritated at uh, disciples. <laughs> right? On the boat, he tells them, you know, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. You know what the disciples discuss? <laughs> hey, did any of you bought bread from the Pharisees? <laughs> How dumb can you be? That means, don't buy bread from the Pharisees because their leaven is also good as the leaven from the other guy. And Jesus said, I'm not talking about leaven. 
He says, when you're going to find those two visions right there, then they understood. He's talking about hypocrisy. <laughs> not actual bread. Not their mind work. Hey, did we buy liver from them? You know, is it made by the Pharisees? Don't buy liver by the Pharisees. <laughs> what? So they really frustrate Jesus many times. But, you know, Jesus only like spoke judgment against the Pharisees and against unbelief. That's it. <coughs> so even when uh, Jesus said go to you Pharisees he first it in the sense of uh, sternness and he was crying physically he was crying I saw Jesus tears he was almost like he was crying for them when he, he said he said oh I will be like a mother hand I could take you under my name he has crying when he pronounced a judgment. So that's why people kind of take this as Jesus is angry. Or, you know? The closest he finds is when the weep. Yeah. He weep and chase the people out. Right. Yeah. So for <coughs> the disciplinary angel, like in the Old Testament, like they take God as kind of an angry God. Is it also the sternness? Yes. They were created to reflect that color, the sternness. God has subcontracted to that. And they were made for that. Unfortunately, that was necessary. In the presence of evil, that was necessary. Just like soldiers and, uh, and policemen are necessary. They will no more be necessary in a perfect world. Correct? In a world where no one will make war. We don't need soldiers and police and no crime. But as long as there's evil, you need them. Although policemen and soldiers are supposed to be generally friendly, but can you imagine a soldier shooting at the enemy, grinning with glee? Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> <laughs> Hi! 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 Right? Have to look stern. <laughs> Killing the enemy. <laughs> right. So unfortunately, the the the, the, the uh, angels had to look stern and uh, had to carry out their duties. <laughs> Is that why uh, like uh, people use anger as a sort of protection? But it's actually they should be stern, yeah, but, well, right. but not becoming angry. People use it as a sort of protection, <coughs> unfortunately. And then people perceive my friendliness and love as a weakness. But they haven't realized the real me. Inside is, is what's that matter that they use for Wolverine? Uh, uh, Elementium, which doesn't exist like just in a movie. So, it's like steel on the inside. Right is right, wrong is wrong, unless you can really show it from the Bible. And each person's conscience detect right and wrong slightly differently. Some things are right to me, could be wrong to a person. Because I'm following a revelation, a person judged me based on natural laws. So, I can't argue with that. So, where I can't do anything, I just keep quiet and absorb the blows to me. That means time for the cross. Huh? You know, there are times to be the cross. There are times to be the resurrection. Times of the cross mean people punch you, you just absorb. Huh? There's nothing you can do. You just have to absorb all the blows. They punch you, they slap you, they do things to you. But one day, judgment seat are different. So sometimes you've got to endure the cross as a suffering. Sometimes you're allowed to exercise your authority. And, uh, like uh, William Rand, uh, one time, the Lord must have allowed it, there was a demon-possessed man who got into the meeting. And was rambling all kinds of nonsense against him. Came right in the front, threatening. And then, if you remember that meeting written in the book, he spoke very quiet, so quietly only two, three people nearby could hear him. 
He said, Satan, because you have come against the prophet of God, you shall now bow before him. And then the man felt a, a pressure pushing. Uh, he was still even more that. Forced him to his knees. And then he let out cry. So sometimes you're allowed to exercise that authority. But generally we take the punches. <coughs> Praise the Lord. Well, for manifestation to love, not bad thing. But it's tied to manifestation. Yeah. Like we are asking, how can we not be deceived? Remember the point? How not to be deceived? In the end, it's all about love. If you got anger in you, remember Jesus said in John 14, Satan is coming, but he has nothing in me. So if you got something in you like uh, sin, anger, negative things in your life, that one can blind you. So the manifestation will become polluted. That's the enemy infiltration. Uh, are you going to say something? Oh, I want to ask one more question. Uh, there was one concern when you said anger can take many forms, so can be uh, transmitted. Even anger. Sadness and yes. various other forms. So when we renounce anger every time, so we also renounce sadness and everything that is kind of. That anger can, can be you know, converted into. Renounce might be a big word. In renounce, as you know, renunciation is like, like renounce the citizenship kind of thing. Uh, I feel that when we are born again, everything is clear. But we need to be taught in our mind understanding that we give up our rights to be angry. Which include giving up sorrow and sadness because Jesus has taken it on the cross. With the exception of intercession, when we weep for others. Because they say you were so in tears and live in joy. So part of sowing sometimes is in tears. Well, please go. You guys enjoying before you all go back, eh? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Praise the Lord. So, ask away. Yeah. Just to make sure we have enough time to pray tonight, but yeah, ask away. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Welcome. Thank you. Oh, you're all ready to pray. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So let's rise. Let's sing a song. And we get ready to go into prayer. And remember, as you pray tonight, God can manifest Himself. And He is manifesting. In fact, when you learn to tune out the natural, don't be distracted, and your heart is full of hard love. But the only protection against deception is love in our hearts. Just the pure, unconditional love of God. And you might think you have a lot of love, but let me guarantee you, if you find more and more people hard to love, that's where your limit is. And every time you reach a limit, find more love. Find more love. Until you can love the whole world and every human being inside. So let's grow in that so that God can manifest Himself. Thank you, Lord. We are standing Jesus' love, we are. 